What is going on, everybody? How are you guys doing today? This is your boy, Christian Israel, and you are tuned into Christ and Crypto in the Morning. But if you're watching this a little later, this is actually a section on the show called Daily Topics, where we dive into the news cycle aspect of what is going on in the market as we speak. And today's news after a long weekend is interesting. We got a couple of video clips for you. And what we did, we played earlier uh, in the show that I don't have to go through again for you. Um, as I stated earlier in the opening, I was in a trade short, went ahead and got out um, because I wanted to see what is happening in here. But now, while I'm speaking to you, it is breaking certain channels of mine, certain dispositions of mine as well that I am looking to. And I am probably going to try to re-enter it, but might see because I have this show. So let me tell you right now, me trying to trade at this at the same time of this show, I am actually going to move this show, Christ and Crypto in the Morning, earlier. We are going to start at 8 a.m. from now on um, and get out of here about 9 o'clock um, and then eventually make it earlier so be on the lookout we will be moving the show in an hour earlier sooner if not by the end of this week it will be monday morning um, we are also moving offices uh what to west texas so we will be moving from dallas to west texas so we might be taking some time off to get that going i will try not to uh miss too much time or if i have to just come on and do a video and update you guys with my phone that will do but what you guys saw in the opening just now, and I'm glad you guys are here. What you saw in the opening was this gentleman. Uh, oh, now you want to go to the. Now you want to do all this stuff, huh? Okay. So it was uh, a video playing from ProCoin News, the crypto creator news this morning. And what that says is AMTV says Pantera Capital Novogratz profited millions on Luna cells right before crash. And I just played that video a little bit of that video for you in the beginning and we're not going to do too much of that today actually any of that during this so if you want to see that video you can go find it um it's on another guy's youtube channel however let me read to you uh let's see here it's based on an nbc report okay and, and the cnbc report says that uh mike novogratz made millions selling luna before the crash and my thing is, I'm pretty sure they traded against their their people. And now I'm, I know I've seemed a little distracted in this moment is because I am trying to decide if I'm going to re-enter this short right now. Um, it is already down two cents and a specifically XRP, which is 5% this morning. And I'm waiting for one more possible bounce and then I will get back in this short. But I was a fully expecting a BART um, and still expecting 36 cents on the way down. And I got some things I got to do. So I am going to be trading very aggressively this week. With that said, we have uh, CNBC here. It says the fund co among the winners of the UST flash crash for Pantera Capital, a hedge fund that saw 100x return on its investment. Joey Krung, the fund's co-chief investor, investment officer, so it's CNBC that in the primary fund where they held and traded Luna, they sold 87% of their position from January 2021 through April 2022. Pantera then sold another 8% in May once it was clear UST peg had broken. At the end of it all, Krug says that Pantera got stuck with about 5% of their position. All that, liquid, all that liquidation translated to a return of one, $171 million on a $1.7 million initial investment. Assuming the remaining Luna they own continued to be worth nothing. Even as the fund was selling, Pantera Capital CEO Dan Moore had joined CNBC in December 2021 to talk about his top altcoin picks, which included Terra Blockchain's Luna token. At the time, Luna was more up more than 15,000%. Quote, we think it's one of the most promising coins for the coming year, Moore has said of Luna. So many people are just discovering it and just starting to trade it, unquote. But Krug says the firm's initial decision to liquidate came down to the risk management and rebalancing of the fund. Quote, for the large portion which we sold over 2021 and part of 2022, it was 
a really simple risk management reason, said Krug. It kept becoming a larger and larger part of the fund, so we had to de-risk it since you can't really run a liquid hedge fund with one position being large position of the fund. So they were on TV telling you to buy as they were selling. That's pretty much what this says. And then as they were selling, and it was depegging, instead of doing it for their clients, they were selling it personally for them. So it says in a public letter uh, address, a public letter addressed to shareholders, friends, partners, and the crypto community, Novogratz, who got a tattoo on his arm to, mem to memorialize his status as an official lunatic, open, opined on where the project went wrong, but also noted that Galaxy took profits along the way. In its Q1 earnings filing, Galaxy noted that the largest contributor to its net realized gain on digital assets of $355 million was the sales of, you guessed it, Luna. Other major backers of Terraform Labs include some of the biggest names in venture capital, including Lightspeed Venture Partners, Coinbase Ventures, period. Three Arrows Capital and Jump Crypto bought into the Luna token. CNBC has not learned how these firms fared. So I wanted to read that to you. Uh, you got Chris Green here, that, you know, Bitcoin rich dude uh, going in on it. It's just a nice little read for you. It's not no promotion for him or anything like that. It's more of a, it did a little nice video on it. Um, and I wanted to go over that. Okay. So that is pretty much the end of that part. Now let's talk about leadership. I just want to jump in there and I want to talk about Ripple and XRP today. Now, let me, let me, let me discuss this with you. Okay. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna big screen you here. I'm gonna big screen you here. So let's discuss something. All right. The first discussion is something Bearable Bull brought up, which I thought was really, really good. Uh, it brought my opinion up. So he said, you know, Terra Luna, which we all know what happened in UST. We all know what happened. But within one, two weeks, I think two weeks, within two weeks of that rug pull, that scam, that broken down where everyone lost money millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars lost in like what 42 hours or something like that right from one coin dpeg and the algorithm does not work they only delisted luna for a small period of time to stop them from being traded again so the exchanges wouldn't make money or so the exchanges wouldn't lose money Fire away, one and a half weeks later, they had launched over the weekend Terra Luna or Luna 2.0. And Bull made a big, big, something that just clicked for me. He said, all the scams and all the stuff going on with Luna, and they re-list it within pretty quickly. It's a scam. It's not regulated. People just lost a bunch of money. No utility behind it. It's an algorithm movement that grows and then dumps on you, basically, right? I know that's oversimplifying it, but no American exchanges outside of Uphold are listing XRP, but all of the exchanges in America are listing Luna 2.0. And when he pointed that out to me, I was like, oh, <laughs> well, that makes sense now, doesn't it? We own the one. And you just got to be patient. You have to be patient. This is the one. All the scam coins are being listed. But XRP is not allowed to be listed. That's just a big deal. And why do I bring that up? Well, we're going to look at a couple people today. And the first one we're going to look at is this lady right here. We're going to listen to her words. Rosie Rios, who is a board member of Ripple. And I want you to listen to what she has to say here. And I'm really going to hope that my headphone is working because I don't think it actually connected just now. So I'm going to mute this, my mic, just in case. The future of investments, the future of money, and specifically crypto. Today, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite topics, the future of investments, the future of money, and specifically 
cryptocurrencies. I'm going to start with a little bit of my background. I am a trained analyst. After graduating from Harvard, my first job was a commercial property underwriter for general reinsurance. So I am trained in managing high-valued risk. Prior to becoming Treasury of the United States, I was managing director of investments for a $22 billion firm based in San Francisco. And I was asked by President Obama to be part of the Treasury transition team at the height of the financial crisis. As you've heard, I was the longest Senate confirmed official in the Obama administration. And yes, it is my name on the lower left-hand side of U.S. money. So uh, out of the approximately $2 trillion of U.S. currency in circulation worldwide, my name is approximately on $1.8 trillion. So I can honestly say that no one has made more money than I have. And I want to start by saying I am also on the board of Ripple, which is XRP, uh, cryptocurrency. But I want to make something very, very clear. Blockchain is here to stay. The train has left the station. You're going to hear me quoted about that all the time. As far as I'm concerned, whether it's fractional real estate, whether it's art, whether it's NFTs, blockchain is not going away. And so the question is, how do we take advantage of this? Right? So how do we take advantage of this? That's what she wants to know. So who I just had you listening to there was Rosie Rios, right? She's the board member. We know this. She came from the treasure. Her name is, I don't think I have any cash up here, but her name's on the money. She's a board member. And again, I point this out. 2.0 Terra Luna or Luna is on all these American exchanges, all of them, after a massive scam. Billions of dollars lost. Massive scam. Luna is listed on all of these exchanges. All of them. All of them. One more time. All of them. But Ripple XRP is only on Uphold. And that's just because XRP runs behind the scenes. But imagine that. They're calling out there calling XRP a security, a scam, and all these things. But the scam is the only ones being listed on exchanges. This is how you know it's the one. And when the bull pointed that out, I was like, oh, yeah, that's a good point. Oh, that's a good point. So I started digging today and said, I want to do a show based on a little bit more XRP. And here's Ashish Birla. If you see here, Ashish Birla, okay, he is the GM of RippleNet, building products on the blockchain since 2013. He's also an angel investor. We can see right here, he's a general manager of RippleNet. Not RippleX, but RippleNet. And there is an interview here that I want to play for you. And it starts at the 15 minute. I'm not going to play all of it, just a little bit of it. Uh, uh, Let me back that up for you. Ask too many questions there. And I want to play this first off. What's up, Ropa Dope? What's up, Leo? Good to see you guys. Uh, I want to play this for you so you can listen. And what he says in this interview, and I'm going to do it over maybe the next, uh, what do you got, 10 minutes until he makes a point about Swift specifically. So give it a listen. Uh, and I'm going to mute my mic and I'm going to let you give this a listen. Give it a go. And I'm going to blow this up for you. Okay. That's a very helpful issue. Now, um, uh, I was thinking about this. I'm thinking, is the aim of uh, RippleNet and other competing platforms, is the aim to eventually replace Swift? Um, I don't know if you saw the MasterCard CEO's comments at the World Economic Forum. Um, I think they were asked, the, the panel was asked whether SWIFT would still be here in five years. Everyone said yes, and the MasterCard CEO said he did not think SWIFT will be here in five years. So I was thinking of that when I was writing these questions for you and thinking, you know, is the aim to replace SWIFT? Uh so you hear that right there before I let you hear his answer. So MasterCard said that swift will not be in five here in five years and she just asked the sheesh burla if ripple plans to ripple net plans to replace swift okay uh well i think we have bigger ambitions than replacing swift so remember there's like, to move money internet you know is the aim to replace swift
Uh, well, I think we have bigger ambitions than replacing Swift. So remember, there's to move money internationally, there's two components. There's the messaging component, but then you actually have to move the funds. That's not what Swift does. Swift only does the messaging. So they help banks communicate uh, with each other around the world. But you know, the settlement is done out of band. The great thing I think was really, really innovative about crypto and RippleNet is that we do both. We've modernized both. So using Swift for messaging is like WhatsApping using a fax machine today. Uh, so we modernize that using APIs, it's real time, but then we also do the settlement. There's not another solution out there that does both instantly like RippleNet. And so uh, you know, our solution is now you know, a lot bigger than what Swift does. Uh, I think Swift is gonna be around for, uh, for five years. It takes a long time to change like the entire banking system. I mean, upgrading the mainframe at BNY Mellon is- You hear that? It takes a long time to, re to change the banking system. Long time to change the banking system. Here we go. Uh, I think Swift is gonna be around for, uh, for five years. It takes a long time to change like the entire banking system. I mean, upgrading the mainframe at BNY Mellon is probably a couple hundred million dollars to do to modernize that so that they can move off of Swift. So I think it's, I think Swift. Did you hear that? He just dropped a hint. He just said BNY Mellon is going to move off of Swift and it's gonna cost him a hundred million dollars to do so. And I don't know if I've heard that around a little bit, but he just kind of dropped a nugget there and said, BNY Mellon, and just in case you're curious, that's standard custody guy used to work there. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. Let me play this. Let me play this for you. Let me play this for you. This is just a little bit of information. Swift is here to stay. I think the most innovative companies today are going to move off of Swift and they're going to use modern technologies like crypto and what we're building at RippleNet. Uh, and that's really what's helping us grow. Uh, we, there is really no other uh, alternative to Swift that's comprehensive and does more than the one that we built on top of crypto. So I'm excited about what's, uh, what's ahead for us. Ashish, uh, bigger picture wise, if you look 10 years from now, do you expect most people to be moving money overseas by crypto? I mean, is that, uh, is that one of the goals? Yeah, I, 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 it is a better, absolutely better way to move money. A absolutely. But, you know, I, I remember like I started my career and again, we can just keep dating myself here like, you know, 20 some years ago, two decades or nearly two decades ago. But, you know, it, 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 the internet was really hard to use, uh, you know, when I first got started. But today my mom sends me a message every morning, you know, good morning. Did you have your morning, uh, you know, chai or whatever? But she sends it to me, but she doesn't realize she's using the internet. It's behind the scenes, but it just sort of works, right? On her iPhone or on her iPad. And uh, I think crypto is gonna be really similar. We're all gonna use crypto, not, not only for uh, moving money, but all sorts of other use cases, but it's gonna be embedded into our daily lives. It's gonna be plugged into our iPhones. It's gonna be plugged in in the background to our cars. Uh, it's going to like really be something that's an enabling technology. I don't think people are gonna wake up in the morning and say, listen, uh, Kathy, I'm gonna send you some crypto. They're gonna say, hey, listen, Kathy, I'm gonna send you this cool NFT or I'm gonna actually send you some money. And in the background, uh, that process and that infrastructure will be powered by crypto because no doubt this is a better way to move money. And no doubt this is a better way to, for finance to be built uh, beyond even payments. Uh, I know that first ha uh, hand from building products in this space over the last nine years. So he's he kind of gave you a couple of things, right? One, uh, he is showing you that one patience, right? He believes Swift will not be replaced in the next five years, but even referred to his mom sending text messages, understanding that we don't know that the internet's really behind those text messages. It's not a phone line anymore. Everything is kind of ran on the internet. And what's he saying here is that we're not going to wake up and say, "Hey, let me send you some XRP." No, we're going to make mob. We're going to make the move. Let me send you this. Let me buy this. Let me send whatever he said. NFTs was his option, right? And that's how we'll move about this. And that's what I try to tell people when I say crypto is already being used. It's already in behind the scenes. You don't even know you're using it. And that's why I wanted you to hear some of that, right? Is the fact that they have bigger ambitions. They have bigger ambitions than Swift.
they will be bigger than Swift. I'm going to play about five more minutes of this, uh, her next her next question, and then we'll be done. Let me go ahead. Okay, so in 10 years, you expect that to be happening. We'll, we'll check in. Yeah, <laughs> I'll say five years, I expect we'll, that we'll, to we'll happen. We'll check in here. Um, I want to remind the audience, if uh, she says something... Listen to this part one more time. Yeah. We'll check in here. Happening. Okay, so in 10 years, you expect that to be happening. We'll, we'll check in. Yeah, <laughs> I'll say five years, I expect we'll, that to we'll, happen. We'll check in here. Um, I want to remind the audience, if she says something that you find interesting, you would like to ask a question. On the bottom right emoji, we will have speak. We can uh, dig a little deeper into the trends of global money uh, movement because it is very, very interesting what's happening in the crypto world. You and I, the last time we talked, we talked about how a lot of Ripple Net growth is coming from overseas. Um, and I have two questions for you on that that I think the audience would really like to hear about. One is, why is there not more U.S. growth? Is that related to the legal uncertainty with the SEC case? And secondly, where are you seeing most of your growth overseas coming from and why? Yeah, great questions. I would say, like, uh, number one, like, uh, as a macro theme, the reason that we're seeing a lot of growth, especially in emerging markets, is because these nations, uh, these regions are digitizing really, really fast. Folks are getting an iPhone or a computer for the first time, and now that opens up a new way to send and receive money. So we, you know, early on at Ripple, we hit that first inflection point. Uh, and again, when they're rebuilding something, they're looking to new solutions like RippleNet. Uh, to, to rebuild their technology. So I would say like that's one really big macro theme that's helped us grow and it's helped us tackle uh, the emerging markets. I would say like, why haven't we seen more growth in the United States? I think part of it is like, hey, the United States is already you know largely digitized uh, for the most part. But secondly, in a lot of these emerging uh, markets, those regulators have been very proactive in terms of uh, regulating crypto. And so banks in those uh, countries, financial institutions, fintechs, uh, feel uh, a little bit safer from a regulatory perspective of trying new technologies. And you're seeing that flourish in you know, Latin America, in APAC. Uh, again, the governments have been proactive because they know that this is like a technology that could help open up their economies. Uh, you know, they benefit too if more of money is coming in and less of it's going to fees to like large banks. Uh, that means there's more money in in their country to spend on GDP uh, and help them grow and prosper as well. And by the way, like this is, uh, you, you know, this should sound familiar because in the 1990s, the United States was the one that was uh, regulating the internet. We were being proactive about it. We created regulation and as a result, You've seen so many companies from Apple to Google to Amazon flourish in the United States uh, based here. But again, it started with a you know, really good bill back in the 1990s that was bipartisan that paved the way for these companies to safely operate in the United States. These companies, meaning leading internet companies that you know today, uh, were possible because of proper, good, proactive regulation by the United States government. So, do you hear that? We are waiting, and we know this. This is not something, guys, that we have not understood already. We have been waiting for the SEC, Congress, someone to act. But in the meantime, we can invest or research or understand or get into or know what's really there. And my thought here, right, is kind of like uh, Michael Berry in the 2008 housing crisis. And this is how I'll sign this off. He saw something, no matter how far down it got, right, because he made a big bet that the housing market would crash. Everybody laughed at him. In fact, he made a big bet. Everyone laughed at him so much that his investors tried to sue him. His investors tried to get out, but they're locked in and... He said, no, I see it. It's my job to make you guys money. 
despite how you feel, despite everything else going on out there, this is where I've placed my bet. And despite him going down 1%, down 2%, down 20%, having to do a margin call, it paid off because he did his own research. The timing might not be there. He, it didn't happen when he thought it would. But it happened. And not only him, but his clients profited it tremendously. To the tone of something, $350 million per client on that trade. And that's what this is. RippleNet XRP is that trade. It's the trade. Yeah, you're going to get, there's other assets, assets, assets out there. But just how I open this show. Luna 1.0 lost billions of dollars in a market cap in 72 hours. Week and a half later, every single exchange listed 2.0 Luna, which dumped 80% on the opening. But almost two years after this frivolous SEC lawsuit, only one exchange uphold in America without a VPN allows you to get it. It is not for the retail investor. It's for the institutional investor. Know what you own. Be smart. Be smart. And this is your boy, Christian Israel. You are tuned into the daily topics part of Christ and Crypto in the morning. Please like, subscribe, and do that social media thing. I appreciate you so much. Talk to you soon. Let's check out of this section. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Please make sure you like, subscribe, share this video, subscribe to this channel, and do the thing that people do on social media. At Twitter, at TikTok, you know, New Creation Capital. Let us know, guys. Thanks so much. I hope you guys have a great day. Later, guys.